Hi, everybody. This is Jim Cornette, pro wrestling legend, and you're listening to the Book in the Territory Unprofessional Wrestling Podcast. Welcome back, everyone, for this week's episode of Book in the Territory Smoky Mountain Wrestling Podcast. This will be Smoky Mountain Wrestling episode number 93 from November the 6th of 1993. 93 in 1993. Wow, I just uh, it clicked when I was reading that uh, as I look at my notes. Uh, Doc, uh, how you doing this morning, man? You hanging in there? Well, as always, I am blessed. Looking to be a blessing in figuring out how we can fuck this thing all the way up. <laughs> be blessed and be a blessing, brother. We're start, we're, hey, man, we're starting down. Hopefully we'll get our third free bird into, into the corner here. But he's snowed in in Denver like the night that David Von Erich had to fill in for Buddy Roberts. Where's Harper at, man? Uh, he told me his computer is doing a major update, so I'm waiting on him to tell me or go green and let me know that he is available. So can you imagine figured... what can you imagine what kind of update work is going on on a, a computer of, of hard body Harpers? That computer is like 20 years old, so there's no telling and all the what... all the viruses it has to clean up and. Just... Well, he says he doesn't use his computer for porn; he uses his phone. Well, so, yeah, that's that's what smart people do. <laughs> he took, that way, he doesn't get any viruses. All right, well, we'll get rolling into the episode. Um, we're still in Jellico, and let me warn you: we'll, as always, be as unprofessional as ever, as you heard Jim Cornette at the beginning of this episode say, because we're the unprofessional wrestling podcast. So, if you get offended, that's your fault, not us. Uh, but no, seriously speaking, uh, I joke, I kid, uh, as Corny always says. We're still in Jellico. This is the fourth tape in Jellico. So, point. Uh, I want to point something out here. This is this is what's crazy. This was taped in Jellico on October the 4th of 93. Here we are, November 4th, 1993. So this was actually taped before the Parade of Champions cards, which we now know that we reviewed like three to four weeks ago. So it's just a... Crazy how wrestling was done and had to be booked back then with how the TV rolled out and made its uh, way to the cities and towns where it aired. But whatever, I just wanted to make that note. Uh, this was recorded, this uh, episode was filmed a month before it actually made air on this particular November 4th, 1993. So, Doc. I feel like we, the ring truck broke down in Jellico and we're just stuck here. Uh, possibly that sounds like it's a uh, something that is a uh, part of it. Yes. Uh, so we are again, um, Dutch and Bob Cottle break things down at the very beginning of it. Tracy Smothers will be in action. We got to get highlights of the Moon Dogs again. This is this is going to be the same highlight we saw on the previous episode where we kind of uh you know you <laughs> you and Harper had a lot of fun with. Uh, there's a taped incident of the bullet. Something goes down there, so we'll talk about that. Primetime Brian Lee versus Bobby Blaze, and we will crown a new Beat the Champ TV title because the Dirty White Boy has relinquished the title, is what Bob Cottle tells us. Dutch picks two names from the hat. One is Juicy Johnny, and the other is Tim Horner. Seems very classy, there's, I would say. There's a, there's a joke in there somewhere. Uh, yeah, so by the time we get to that, hopefully Harper will be on and, and ready to roll. I guess I could have called his phone if he wanted to really get started uh, in between now and then. So maybe I should uh, see if he wants to do that. Uh, uh, while I'm texting him and trying to get this unprofessional thing going, we got Chris Comet and Chris Canyon versus the Heavenly Bodies. You got any thoughts from this match? Well, it really wasn't a match. So you want to tell, you want to tell us what you think? Well, so they all get ready for a match. And in come the Bruise Brothers, because remember, they're still hot, because uh, Corny bust them down to the minor leagues, and uh, they're like, we're the best tag team in the world, in the country, and whatever. So they run in and start beating up the, or trying to beat up the, uh, the bodies, but the bodies take off and run, and they chase them out. It always looks goofy when a big six foot seven guy is chasing a professional wrestler. But can't sprint because he doesn't want to catch the guy. I don't know. You done dial? <laughs> Are you done dialing? Uh, no, you were doing a fine job there. Anyway, I'm, I was. Gonna... Well, I'm really. I, I you know, I, I I have to keep saying this. I'm really good at what I do. Oh, okay. I bet you are. Well, any, for, for anyway, uh, so what we get here is, like you said, the Bruce Brothers hit the ring, attack the bodies, and we go straight to a Bobby Blaze promo. So we didn't even have a match. So Comet and uh, Canyon uh, earned their paycheck by just uh, not really doing anything, which is fine, I guess. So anyway, uh, let's go to Bobby Blaze's uh, first promo, or the first promo of the, the card tonight, and it's Bobby Blaze. So let's hear what uh, our buddy Bobby's got to say. Here it is. 
All right, fans, our guest right now here is Bobby Blaze. We got a title match coming up a little later during this hour, Bobby. And I know you're pumped, primed, and ready for that one. Yes, I am. But you know what? Last week was one of the most embarrassing moments of my wrestling career, Bob Cottle. Chris Candido, you take a lot of store in that WWA world title and those feathers you wear around. Well, I've got a title match for you, Candido. It's going to be real easy for you. It's a turkey title match. Turkey? At turkey title match at Thanksgiving Thunder. It's going to be real easy because the champion is a loser of the match. But you know what? You don't win a belt, Candido. You're going to be the biggest turkey of Thanksgiving because you get tarred and feathered. That's what the champion gets. And I'm predicting the next U.S. turkey title champion at Thanksgiving Thunder will be Chris Candido. All right, fans, that's something we're going to want to see. Thanksgiving Thunder, Bobby, we talked about it. It's going to be great. That's going to be that's going to be some kind of match. It's going to be, and I can't wait to see him on someone's Thanksgiving table with that turkey title, tarred and feathered. All right, fans, that's something we're going to be watching from Bobby Blaze, Chris Candido. Let's go to the ring. All right, Harper. Well, Harper's on with us now. He uh, just called All in. Right. So uh, how you doing, man? You good? I'm doing great, sir. That's great, man. Good to hear from you. Well, as you were dialing in, Bobby Blaze was just wrapping up his uh, turkey title match uh, challenge at Thanksgiving Thunder. The champion is the loser, if I'm hearing it right. So basically, whoever gets pinned is tarred and feathered. Uh, God, Bobby is Mr. Kentucky the way he talked back then. But, Harper, I'll throw it to you. What were your thoughts on our buddy Bobby Blaze right there? I want to see this match. Yeah. It's just something that, that might be seen as, you know, corny shit now. But uh, I think it would be cool to see someone bring something like this back. Have a yeah, something to that. They, yeah, that's kind of true. Because, like, if you think about it, they haven't done the tar and feather thing in so long. It, it, I don't even remember seeing that besides here. Uh, Mid South did it. Memphis did it. Yeah. it. It was done a bunch of places. Uh, I remember seeing it Mid South a ton of times. But you're you're right. Um, they did it. In, they did it to Ricky Morton. What was that a couple months ago? I think, yeah. In, in the promotion. And that's that. That's the episode where you said that had to be a clean up nightmare. Yeah. Fuck that. Ugh. So. Uh, but you're right. It makes you wonder if they brought it back now, what it would look like. Uh, Doc, what were your thoughts on this? Did you hear the crowd pop when he said "tarred and feathered"? Of course. We're we're in Jellico, Tennessee, motherfucker. Shit. That that's why I consistently tell you that if you're ever driving through there, stay on the interstate, pal. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. And the reverse stipulation confused everybody in that audience because they yeah. that's too many moving parts for these simpletons. It didn't conf I mean it seemed pretty simple to follow. Uh for me and you. Okay. I mean it. No, I'm it saying cleat it. Well, I was saying okay. that was too, too you know, like when you when you your kids were smaller, you couldn't give them two step instructions because they couldn't handle it, right? You could only give them like singular instructions. Yes. The only thing that was confusing though is, is I think the thing that you're pointing out is when he said the champion is the loser. Right. They can't that, what wait. Yeah. Cletus is like, hey, wait, what? Wait. <laughs> he gets a belt for losing. First they took her jobs and now they're fucking up a wrestling. <laughs> so, but when he said to stop, Doc, when he said the champion is the loser, that's the part that I threw I think threw everyone off because it was pretty easy to follow that whoever gets pinned is tarred and feathered. I no, but, I was good I was good the whole way through. I'm worried about the uh the the natives there. Okay. <laughs> that's just wrong. I know one thing. Uh, Tracy Tracy uh, Smothers was telling some stories offline about Jellico. I could tell you that much. That, that one time he was on the show, he was so uh, everything I'm Jellico saying stories. is 100% correct. Got I'm it. not saying nothing. All I'm just trying to say is Tracy Smothers was telling some Jellico stories. He was like, God, those people there. So I was like, okay. So, hey, I ain't never been to Jellico, but Tracy Smothers has. And yeah, he was, him and Bobby Blaze were telling me some stories. And that's that. But anyway, was okay. it about was it about fine young ladies and all those sweet grandmas yeah. and just upstanding people of society? Those nice Literally. southern bells, right? Those nice southern bells, ladies, bring your babies. <laughs> what he what he what he really meant was, all right, you bunch of Margies. Okay, clean we up will... your clean up all your chromosomes and come on down to the wrestling. 
That's real nice, Doc. We will keep going. Tracy Smothers versus Larry Santo is up next. Chris, Cran Chris Candido joins commentary. I got a note to play something at 640, so I don't have no clue what I'm about to play, but here it is. His mother. Wait a minute. We're here joined in ringside Chris by Candido. Chris Candido. Chris, what's Tracy Smothers? What is going on, Smokey Mountain Wrestling? You people drinking too much moonshine? First it's baby bottles, then diapers, then belts. Now what, a car and feather? The winner, the loser, and the loser wins, or whatever? I don't understand this. Bobby Blaze, this is the most ridiculous thing I ever heard in my life, but let me tell you something. After I'm done with this, I might just go back to New Jersey where people are saying, but Bobby Blaze, you're going to be the one looking like Big Bird at Thanksgiving Thunder. Okay, so that must have been what I wasn't playing. They were drinking too much moonshine. Yeah, good stuff there. So, uh, Doc, any thoughts from this match? Was Santo out of position for the jawjacker? I, will, I, I seem to remember it looked a little weird. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean. I know we start, we hardly talk about the wrestling around here anymore. Yeah. So, I just, you know, I'd like to focus on the in-ring product. Yeah, we've we've moved on for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> family family friendly family friendly's gone, wrestling's yeah. gone. This is just a hillbilly soap opera now. Mm -hmm. We have we 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 really have moved on from 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 that shit if if you want to keep it real. Like uh I just looked at it again. Yeah, he was way too close to the corner. I mean, Tracy couldn't even jump to hit the jaw jacker. It was kind of pathetic to be honest with you. Not on Tracy's part, but Santo was way too close. I mean, he couldn't there was no room for him to move. He kind of just fell down and hit it, which was looked bad. But you're right. Uh, Harper, any thoughts from what we saw? No. Yeah, I just either. want the people to know that I'm not just sitting there fast forwarding through the matches to get back to more soap opera. I'm watching the <laughs> matches too. Even though, even though we all love the shit talking, right? <laughs> well, it's but the interesting thing here is we're a little over a year and a half in, and this promotion has changed completely yeah it is turned over and changed speaking of change completely we go to a re-air of the moon dogs in memphis that we saw last time and or last week and the moon dogs beat the piss out of these bastards it's just a replay yeah. of everything we saw i hate to be i hate to rehash old shit but the edge of that tub hit that fuck guy again dude. And I, fuck you it fucking bent it it did, man. I was like, if I was that jobber and my eggs weren't scrambled completely from that, I would have just hopped up and kicked that beer belly faggot in the mouth. Wow. <laughs> wow. Really? You heard, you heard <laughs> me. I didn't mean gay. I said the F word. Yeah. Okay. Well, we are unprofessional for a reason. That's Please right. Don't... That's right. And hey, <sighs> I don't care if you're gay, straight, black, or white. You hit somebody in the damn head with the corner of a wash tub bin you you open yourself up for get, catching an ass whooping that shit was uncalled for i agree hopper <laughs> if somebody hit you and <laughs> with the uh, edge of a wash tub like that what would you do to him I mean, dude, that, that's a crime <laughs> that's a well, salt, here's right? the thing harper didn't beat up a, a special little fella so what's yeah. he gonna do yeah. Well, he knew. I mean, Harper understood the situation. We're not talking about a, a someone with special needs. We're talking about a dude just taking liberties and hitting you with the edge of a fucking okay, so iron wash tub. All right, all right. Twisty time menace. What was what, what's worse? What Sullivan did to Daniels with Jeff Daniels with that chair, or what the Moon Dog just did with that guy with the wash tub? That wash tub. The wash tub was worse. I thought so too. That's the instant fucking hospital. What yeah. Fuck? I mean, because that's... I mean, the, the fucking chair is wood. And don't get me wrong. I don't want to get hit in the back of the head and get busted open like that. But you just took a metal wash tub and hit me with the edge of it. You can go fucking fall off a cliff on and just cliff dive and die. That's bullshit. And, but, you know... We're, we're spending too much time on it because something else is going to happen with the Moon Dogs next week. We'll have a lot of discussion about. It. But we got a Rock and Roll Express promo coming up here. More trash talk from the Rock and Roll. Uh, here it is. Now with the Rock and Roll Express, Robert. What about that pair? I'll tell you something. Let me tell you something, Jim Cornette. I want you to send a message to the Moon Dogs. Tell the Rock and Roll Express are here, here in Smoky Mountain Mountain. And hey, brother, we ain't gonna be no fight. It's gonna be one heck of a fight. Roll Express. Now you got the Moon Dogs. They want to give them license here to wrestle in Smoky Mountain Wrestling. This match right here is not even sanctioned. But you see, Jimmy, like we told you before, we're not going to back down to nothing. That nothing that you throw at us because we are the Rock and Roll Express and we are the Smoky Mountain Tag Team Champions. And one thing about it, I'm looking forward 
that Thanksgiving. You know why? Thanksgiving Thunder. You got that right. You know why? Because last year we kicked the dog crap out of the heavenly bodies, and this time we're going to kick the dog crap out of the moon dogs. All right. <laughs> All right, fans. We'll be back right after this. All right, Doc, your thoughts. I didn't understand one damn word Gibson said. Do you ever? Well, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> but he's, man, if he if he drops in modulated underneath that crowd noise, you can forget about it. Uh, and then Morton's okay. I like the fact that he he's he's bringing up old shit. He's got history here. He's he's bringing up last Thanksgiving Thunder. We kick some ass. We're gonna do it again. I feel you. I I, I was kind of indifferent on this thing. Harper, what did you have? It was a little different. He's he's going to kick the crap out the dogs. I tell you what. Um, there's a contrast in styles here, obviously, between the dogs and Moon Dogs yeah. and these these guys. So, I guess that's kind of intriguing a little bit. Well, and it it says a lot about the Rock and Roll Express that they're going to wrestle the Bruise Brothers, the Heavenly Bodies, the Moon Dogs, who they got in the next year. They can work with anybody. That's true. Very versatile. Throw them in there with whoever. Yeah. And and they're smaller. I mean, they're not small, but they're smaller guys being able to do it. Well, Ricky Morton is small. Robert Gibson is I think taller than people realize. He's not right. as small as as people think he is. And he's and he's thicker. Yeah, he and he always I say he always. I mean, from like mid eighties on, he was always a, he he was a lot bigger than people gave him credit for. I'm not talking about now, where he's gained some weight over the years. But that, that's you know, nice. He's are you talking I mean, about he's, when he got. Are you talking about when he got the whole shaft in on you? He's not bigger than quite. <laughs> that dude is a trip, man. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> he is hilarious, man. He's. I mean, he, he may not be the best promo in the world, but it's just. That dude is he, he's a, he's he's funnier than, than you'd ever realize uh, behind the scenes. Good lord. Okay, so uh, are y'all ready for the for the fourth and final installment of Tammy's Tips? I'm pissed that this is the last one. Hold on, I gotta let me, let me do something real quick. Let me ask that question again. Are y'all ready for the fourth and final installment of Tammy's Tips? And what did you just say, Hopper? I'm pissed that this is. The last one. Why does it have it, to end? It makes yeah, it someone valuable. Should, someone should call her up and be like, hey, remember like 25 years ago we did those Tammy tips? We're going to restart those. <laughs> except, you're, except you're Margie now. <laughs> <laughs> That's just I'm, just dirty. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I, I guarantee you that when Tammy's on her diet right now, she looks better today than she did even back then. You heard me. And I guarantee you, Hopper would still, uh, would still, still give it to it out. See, there you go. Would Farting it all, watching? right? Yeah. Tammy, we love you. It's all in love. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let's, uh, let's just jump into it. Here we are. Tammy's tips. Uh, this week is the, uh, the makeup edition. Good Lord. Here we go. We're here with another edition of Tammy's Tips, and today we'll be talking about makeup. You'll be amazed at how I can make Margie into an acceptable human being. And girls, if I can do it for her, there's hope for you too. But first, before we get into any makeup tips, we have to start with something that I know most of you probably have never done before, but it's an essential part of skincare. First, you must wash your face. Now, normally, we would use a gentle moisturizing cleanser for cleansing your face, but in this case, I think we're going to do some old-fashioned scrubbing and use some soap. So, Margie, do how I tell you, and please wash your face. Well, she's got the water turned on. Look at this. She's taking like a duck to water. Oh, what a good job. She paid attention when I was teaching her. Jesus. That's it, Margie. Rinse the face. Good. Here you go. Mm. Okay. Very good. Oh, you did wonderful for a uh, Margie, did you shave today? Not yet. Well, <laughs> girls, for those of you like Margie who have problem with the little beard, we need to use a lot of base makeup. Hold this, please, Margie. Okay. Let's see what we can do.
I think we need to go get an economy size uh, bucket of this. Um, I think we're going to need some more practice. Tune in next week for another edition of Tammy's Tips. No. That sucks. Uh, okay. What do y'all got from this? Um, Jesus she didn't Lord. shave. She didn't shave. I- she needs an economy sized bucket for this one. That's just an insult and a half right there. <laughs> um this is the last one, so you know, get it all out now while you why you can. <laughs> why are you pissed? Because it's the last one. What this is what, okay, so what when she... <laughs> 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 So when Margie turned around to wash her face. I just noticed, like, I was like, my first question was, what shape would you call Margie? I mean, not like <laughs> women's shape, but like just geometric. She's like an oval with legs. <laughs> <laughs> Leave Margie alone. Gee, come on. Okay, man. so here, here's what I would have. What if Margie's alive and listening to this? All right, Margie. Get her on. Get her on, dude. <laughs> that would on. be awesome. I did ask Tommy. <laughs> I told you I asked Tommy Noe, and he just he didn't know. So here's what I would have done to pay this off if we're done. I would have had – it wouldn't have made much sense in the arena, in a gym, I don't think. But I would have had prime time and Sonny or Sonny out shopping or somewhere, and Margie catches her. And it's like, you said you were going to make me a star and beat her ass <laughs> and pay it off. Well, if you heard Tammy at the end, she said, we'll catch you next time for Tammy's tips. And right. so I, I I guess that they had planned on doing more and it just never came to fruition. I'm just reason. glad we cut this off before we got to the female hygiene. Episode. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh. <laughs> Look, I want to watch this right, right. If her face needs to get shaved. Imagine what it is down there. Fuck. A tangled web of vines and... It's like Hillbilly Jim and a fucking head scissors. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is Tommy Noe's uh, bathroom. Uh, as you know, this is his house. Uh, look at that 1993 Tennessee wallpaper yeah. on, on the, in the bathroom. Um, I don't know what else to say. This is uh this was a train wreck. Jesus, she hasn't shaved yet today. Um, I just think Margie should have wow. got should have got her heat back by getting to whip Tammy's ass. Or at least like, you know, they were out by the pool or something and she just pushes her in or something. Yeah. You know? Uh but, yeah. But, but they, they leaned into the heel thing and just savaged this poor woman and made and generalized her to every woman in that stupid area. She, and just never paid it off where the where the baby face gets a comeback. <laughs> Shit, this is just this was an incredible. Good lord, it was, you're uh, right. Uh, it was uh, uh, a squash match. <laughs> it sure was. Yeah, it was. A, it was Road Warriors versus you know everybody. Bill Tab and uh, Vernon Deaton in 1986 Crockett Promotions on WCW NWA Saturday Night on TBS. That's what it was. All right, anything else before we close out Tammy's tips? I'm going to miss this. Yeah. Yeah, this is one of those things where uh, we had a lot of fun with Tammy and her tips. Hey, so you know what? Margie. On the, on the other side of it, we always talk about how corporate wrestling runs everything in the ground. They do too much of it. Leave them wanting more. That's what I said. That having only four of them makes it valuable. Here's the other thing. No, this will be on the WWE Network one day. They won't. There, there'd, there'd be no reason to to kick this off to not include Tammy's tips. I would think. Who knows? But uh, I, I popped. I was re-listening when I was editing the show last week when she sat down and she was exercising, and Harper Harper Harper's giving commentary as he watched it, and he's like, <laughs> Harper's Harper's acting like Marjorie. Harper goes, Ah, shit. That's it, bitch. I'm tired. I'm sitting down. 
yeah. it, it popped me because I was sharing my screen. It was really, really good. It was it was phenomenal. But all right, well, that wraps up Tammy's tips number four and the last and only. Let's move on. We got Juicy Johnny versus Tim Horner up next. Uh, it feels like Tim Horner has been uh, missing in action lately. Would you all agree with that? Would you agree with that, Hopper? Uh, he, Have we seen him gonna... lately? Well, I'm trying to remember. Uh, I feel like I haven't seen him in a while, but maybe it's just me. Maybe he's been off training the next generation of wrestlers. Oh, yeah. Uh, maybe that's, so. That's, that's true. Huh? Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well... Here's the thing. So uh, him and his little Lightman buddies have been missing in action as he's, as he's training his uh, his new wrestlers. We'll we'll talk about that another time. Tim's Tim gives us one of his uh, bolts to a fan. Well, gives up one of his bolts, I should say. Real classy of him. Uh, Bob Cottle tells us that Ron Wright is going to need knee surgery. Poor old brother Ron. And then mm. we get this gem from Daryl Van Horn on commentary for about two minutes. And here it is. Yeah. It's the same right, fan we're joined here at uh, our broadcast booth by Daryl Van Horn. And Mr. Horn, I'm sure you have some pointed comments to make. That's exactly right. I've got some really good news that's going to bring those gin blossoms out on your face, Mr. Caudle. The fact <laughs> is this. My man is making his debut at Thanksgiving Thunder. Now, I asked for two men to wrestle my man, but they would not give me a handicap match. I couldn't find anybody to sign up with him. Everybody was too scared. But one local boy, one person who was either too brave or too stupid he went ahead and signed a match with my man my egyptian prince you're looking at him right here white lightning tim horner now i happen to know that tim horner is a scumbag he may have all these other people here fooled but not me i have it on good authority that his landlord is genuinely concerned about the hanky and the panky going on between him and those two concrete flamingos on his front lawn you're messing with the state bird of New Jersey, Tim Horner. That'll get you five to life in this vicinity, but that won't be anything as bad as what's going to happen when you step in the ring with my Egyptian prince. He's going to send you back to that two-dimensional cardboard nativity box you call a mobile home in a body bag. What is the name? What is the name of your man, by the way? We've heard you talk about him. You say he's a prince, but what's his name? His name is none other than Prince Karis from Cairo, Egypt, the royal nobleman, the most feared man of all professional wrestling. No one here has seen him yet, but he's going to change pro wrestling as we know it. Tim Horner is just the first victim. We're on to bigger and better things. We're moving on to the WWF after we clean slate here. And his name once again is? It is Prince Karras, and for you hillbilly sodomites who can't spell or read, that's K-H-A-R-I-S. All right, Prince Karras, we understand he's a giant of a man, seven feet tall, 350 pounds, and you see Tim Horner in uh, Oh, I mean, Doc, you you said, mm, uh, thoughts? Dude, he called those people hillbilly sodomites. <laughs> that's, that's taking it to about as far as you can go without cursing <laughs> on that TV in 1993. Um, I think Harper may have stepped away. Harper, are you there or you step away? Yeah, I thought he did. I bet you wanted to take a piss. <laughs> okay. he went, man, Van Horn is just... I'm back. He... Okay. Van Horn, Van Horn is, he's a, um, I don't want to call him a force of nature. Cause I, f I feel like I said that about, I've said that about JYD in the, um, in the early eighties in mid South, but Van Horn is like a force. He's, he's just, it's, it's incredible the shit he does, but yeah, whatever. It, it, it sucks. He didn't get more of a, uh, a run in the WCW when he managed, uh, Mortis. Uh, yeah. Wrath. It would have been nice yes. to see like this, this version of him there. Um, that's true, cause he was different as as Mortis's manager. You're right. Yeah, he it's was like, like the he, 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 he like the sinister kind of yeah you know, villain. He had free like it, it, dude. It's like Corny just told him go out there and say something about Horner, and then he just concocted this stuff up in his mind and just and just ran with it, which was beautiful. Because and here's here's the other part, Doc. You got anything else before I go to this next segment with Horner? Well, how can the one thing I didn't like that Van Horn said was how he's the most feared man around, but how come he's feared if nobody's ever heard him or seen him wrestle? That don't make sense. Well, it makes sense because it's a heel saying it, if you ask me. Yeah. It doesn't have to be logical. 
And then he, he was talking about the gin blossoms on Caudle. Good lord. I didn't know that was a, th- a thing. I thought that was just that stupid band for the 90s. I well, they had to get their name thing. somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> God. All right. Um, well, after Van Horn's, like, great little sound bite there, just a train wreck as usual, good stuff, uh, we get it followed up by this. All right, fans, it's a pleasure for us right now to introduce <laughs> you to our new television champion, $1,000 richer, White Lightning, Tim Horner. Congratulations, Tim. Well, thank you, Bob. You know, I know how this feels like because I was TV champ once right. before. That means another $1,000 I can take to Third National Bank, deposit it. That's what wrestling's all about. Yep. And I know last week everybody got to meet Mike Furness, good friend of mine. I'm a good, good friend of his brother's. And as uh, you said last week, he signed a developmental contract right. with Smoky Mountain Wrestling to go to training camp. And I'd just like to say, Mike, it's okay. going to be my... Congratulations, champ. Oh, thanks, buddy. Thanks. It's got to be an awesome feeling right there. Well, it is. A thousand bucks. You know, that's, that's a great feeling. But anyway, like I said, I'm looking forward to working with you in the camp. You know, furnace. <laughs> Furnace family tradition in athletics goes a long yeah, way. God. And I know yeah. you're, you're probably the best one to come out of the Furnace family. Nothing against Doug. But I've seen you perform on the field, in the gym. You're a great How is he athlete. still out it's of breath? It's, great, it's always refreshing to see new Jesus prospects Christ. trying to get into wrestling. Well, I'm looking I, forward to working with you. I don't think you could have a better teacher either, Mike. Not at all. I tell you what, I coming into a group of guys like Tim, and I'm looking forward to going to his school and training with people like him and the Rock and Roll Express. Look at these guys here we're, 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 we're talking about here. Tracy Smothers, the Armstrong brothers, you know, the family tradition. I'm trying to try to carry on a little bit of family tradition here. I got a long ways to go. I'm not getting in no big hurry about it. When this man right here says I'm ready to go in the ring, then that's when it's going to happen. And I tell you, yeah. what, the athletic skill and ability he's got, I don't think it'll be too long, do you? Hey, where else can he go but up, baby? <laughs> All right. Ben, oh, there I'm you have it. Up. Mike Furness, White Lightning, Tim Warner, and we'll be back for right her. after this. Her, her, her. All right. Freedom and free. These colors don't run. Her, her, her. Yeah. Bring his brother Brad back. His fucking brother was fucking awesome. <laughs> he Cuddle was. Just, Cuddle just should have just said, fuck. It just broke character like Ivan Koloff did a month ago with fucking Petrov. Man, I'm like, I can't do this. <laughs> Tim Warner can buy a bunch of fax machines with the check he just got. I could tell you that much. Here's the yeah. thing. I Go back and watch the end of the match. I'm pretty sure he – because you know he can't get numbers right. I'm pretty sure when he won, he mouthed the word $5,000 because he didn't know the steps. He thought he won 5000 and then he got 1000 So I don't think anyone knows the steps. Right. Well, <laughs> dude, he's just out of breath, and he's just blown up. In the words of Dr. Tom Pritchard – who went off on Mike Furness last week or week before that. <laughs> this promo is an insomniac's best friend. That Dude. motherfucker has a, that motherfucker yeah. standing in there with a purse. <laughs> he's got a fucking um, fanny pack, and he's hanging it around. He's his got a vertical him. fanny pack hanging in there, and he stands there like he's standing there like he's holding his arms straight down. But he's holding 100 pounds in each one the way his shoulders slump. So he's got no personality, and he's all kind of slumped. It's like, dude. Yeah. Fuck. And he fucking looks like shit, man. Yeah, he looks tired and sleepy and shit. You're right. It's like, I got to do what? And you know Horner's like, this is my protege because I can, I can do a promo better than him. <laughs> I think it's unfair to bury Mike Furness at this point. No, no it's mean, not. Yeah, it it's is. Not. He's is he it's his probably his first time on TV. He's just he's just going through the motions right there, man. He doesn't know. Well, I'm then, telling you, I, that's good. I I'm bet a- you if you ask Cornette, if somebody were to send it into the to the drive through, uh hashtag corny drive through and we'll say, Hey, Mike Furness was on TV in October ninety three, early November ninety three. Was that his first time ever being on television cutting a promo? I guarantee I just, I you I bet you the other thing is Corny would say, in hindsight, we probably shouldn't have put him out there. He yeah. probably would say that. My point is. But he's out I, there. I, he's out there, and I bet you this was Horner's idea, but who knows. But I bet you this is his first time on TV, and that's why I'm like, I'm not going to sit there and, like, go off on him. Because I, this is. Yeah, maybe just, I shouldn't. Why were you snoring during that? Um, well, Tim Horner would put me to sleep. Uh, so Mike Horner. <sighs> yeah, I'm going to do something. I've got $1,000. It's like an obscene phone call. <sighs> Dude, he sounded like he just fucking went on a on a on a sixty minute sex marathon and he was out of breath. No, dude, yeah, you went yeah. out there and 
freaking worked a four minute match against Juicy fucking Johnny. And if you're out of if you're out of breath when you start, why are you more out of breath when you're done? Dude, I ain't had a wrestling match in eleven years. I guarantee you, if I went out there and worked a three minute match, I wouldn't be out of breath like that right now. That sounds like a challenge. It sure well, does. You and Horner, it. you and Horner, for all the gold, all the glory, and who gets to be the county the commissioner yeah. of Shithole County. Tommy Noe, let's make it happen. Uh, not the match. Uh, let's get Tim Horner on, and I'll Please. officially challenge no, him. No, no, no. I want Horner to stretch your ass. I want yeah. to be for that. Well, you know what's funny? I mean, he, he's I want Horner, definitely. I want Horner to hold you up by your ankles and all the money fall out so Harper and I can finally. <laughs> and we well, all he's... run, run and eat, like kids uh, under a fucking pinata grabbing candy. <laughs> <laughs> he's a he's a really good technical wrestler. So he, I mean, he's he's got that great base. So who knows? But bro, could you, I'm could, not, could you kick I'm out not, of the bridge? If he, I'm if, not, he natural, if he natural bridged you, could you kick out? Between you and I, if I ever got into a fight with Tim Horner, I'm not getting in there to wrestle a technical wrestling match. All right. <laughs> uh, I learned to fight in the streets of New Orleans. Uh, you can do that technical bullshit if you want. We're 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 gonna do things a little bit differently if you're in my backyard. I, I'm joking. Like I'm, I ain't got nothing against Tim. Man, these these two are just trying to uh, cause troubles here. So Tim, you're welcome on the show anytime. Please come on, and uh, that way we can have some fun. But anyway, uh, can we keep going? Because we got a Jim Cornette and Heavenly Bodies promo up next. It's pretty good. Harper, this is a good time for a piss break if you need one. It's about three minutes long. No. Anyway, we'll keep going. Corny and the Heavenly Bodies. Here it is. Fans, we've heard from the Bruise Brothers, the second annual Thanksgiving Thunder. Thunder's gonna be, it's gonna be lightning also, I think, Jim Cornette. Let me just explain something right now. I am sick and tired of the Bruise Brothers running out, sticking their nose in our business just like they did a little bit earlier. I'm sick and tired of stuff like that. And this match that they've got us in at Thanksgiving Thunder, when the promoters told me about it and told me that they had already made the arrangements and it didn't matter whether we wanted to be in it or not, I was upset. You see, it's real simple. Bruise Brothers, I don't like people that don't know their place. I don't like people that don't know their station in life. I don't like people that are too uppity and try to be things that they're not. And that, Bruce Brothers, is what you are. You want to be like the Heavenly Bodies, but you can't because you're too ugly, too poor, and too stupid. Now this match at Thanksgiving Thunder, it's called a gang fight match. And the rules are real simple, and I'm going to reiterate them here right now. The match is no time limit, no disqualification, anything goes. You come as you are. You can wear anything you want to wear. And what's more important, a key rule of the match is you bring any weapon that you want to oh, bring. No. Anything you want to bring to the ring, short of a knife or a gun, you can do it. Can't do that. And that's what I'm so disturbed about because you never know what the Bruise Brothers might have up their sleeve. But I guarantee you, the Heavenly Bodies are veterans of a few Smoky Mountain street fights, and we know how to drag up a little furniture too. But the most important rule of a gang fight match is this. Pinfalls don't count. It's not a three count situation. It's just like an actual gang fight. The fight ain't over until a guy that you're fighting is flat on his face and stays there. So that means that the guy's got to be down for a count of 10. And it's the only purpose that the referee serves is to count that 10 count and award the winner of the match. Bruise Brothers, you backed us into a little bit of a corner. You're awful intimidating. You're awful big. You're awful strong. And you're awful crazy. But our key advantage is you're just like these low class white trash hillbillies in Jellicoe and all around the area. You identify with them. You're just like they are. And what's more important, you're never going to be any better than they are. Because there's always going to be Jim Cornette and guys like the Heavenly Bodies to stop you just like we always stop people like this. Oh, fans, that's it. Jim Cornette, the Heavenly Bodies, and we're right gonna now. we're going to go to the ring again, and we're going to try to have the match that we tried to have a while ago if they wouldn't butt in. All right, let's go to the ring and watch it. What do you a lot went down right there, Doc. What did you have? Well, they can't. This is a gang fight match, but you can't bring a knife or a gun. Aren't those the two primary weapons of a gang member? I'd say, uh, I'd say so. Okay. 
Uh, if you take a drink ever, of something stiff every time Dr. Tom fluffed his hair, you're dead. So we've took, you're yeah, not, that's a that's an old you're thing not, that we've always talked about. Right. But he was on turbo there, so you're you're not with us anymore. And did he say people who know their place and who are uppity? He did. Yeah. He might as well have just said you people. Yeah, he 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 did say that. Yeah, those have yeah. some connotations for for people of your ilk, don't they? Okay, Hopper, what are your thoughts? I like the fucking uh, when a Jimmy's got the like he's like he's got a pistol and he's loading <laughs> the gun up. Jimmy's like, no, 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 you can't do that, <laughs> dude. Del Rey is his mannerisms during these promos when Corny is ripping a new one. Yeah, is is flat out fabulous. It's He's like, dude, I want. Uh, it's great. A, a mime. Yeah, and he doesn't Last... stop. He's, he's a runner. He's <laughs> just, he keeps going. It's 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 pretty. It's pretty incredible when you watch him every single week mm-hmm. do his thing. Last night I watched uh, late ninety five ECW, and it was Public Enemy versus the Heavenly Bodies. And Del Rey has like the same hair on top, but it's like long in the back. He's looking pretty rough. Oh God! Mm. Poor bastard. All right. Anything else from Corny and the Heavenly Bodies there? No. no. I think that is a no. Chris Comet and Chris Canyon versus the Heavenly Bodies are up next. As you heard them, they were about to head to the ring. It's about a three-minute match. The Bodies win, but just as they uh, go to get their hands raised, the Bruises Brothers hit the ring again and attack them and chase them off. Now, I got a question for y'all. Uh, they go they go to a Bruise Brothers promo like after nope. all of this, and I got to tell you something. Uh, you know we usually don't skip promos in Smoky Mountain, but I will just say this. Uh, the promo was terrible, but... Can um, I point out the worst thing that for me in that? What's that? Go ahead. I'm... Their faces now, and they were talking about going to jail. Well, it's very confusing because they they talk about this. It's this whole gang fight thing. I don't know if I want to have a gang fight with those two. No, 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 no. When he said what they have up their sleeve, I was thinking uh, right. Nazi tattoos. Oh, <laughs> that's yeah. nice. I, I, Tell me about but, it. But the promo itself, Doc, what, what did you think about it? Not good. It, yeah. It, it was bad. Hopper, you? I, I don't have one note written down. <laughs> Dude, it was not. It was like, oh, my God. They they went out there, and, and this did not make me want to see them in the heavenly bodies. That, that oh, was my no. Thought. No, no, no. All right. So let's go to let's go to something that's really good good now bob coddle throws us to the bullet in renfro uh let me just let me just play it i here. believe it's renfield Ren, renfield my bad uh and i got something to say so i'm gonna play the first part and then i'm gonna play something else that happens after that so here it is fans the bullet accepted a challenge to meet an opponent arranged by jim Cornette in the four faces of fear at the second annual thanksgiving thunder tour now earlier this week in a taped interview the bullet found out who his opponent will be but also, he got a surprise he didn't expect. Let's watch it right here. Hi, wrestling fans. I'm Brian Matthews, and we're backstage with the Bullet. Bullet, it's come down. People are going to find out, and it's time for you to find out who your opponent is going to be at the second annual Thanksgiving Thunder. You know, as a matter of fact, I was supposed to find out about a half an hour ago. I've right. been here over a half an hour now, and I'm just trying to wonder if there's another one of Jimmy Cornette's tricks, because I was mm-hmm. anxious to find out who I'm going to face in the right. Four Faces of Fear at Thanksgiving Thunder okay. Tour 2. What? What's this bullet? What's the deal? I don't know who. who it's, uh, it, it says to the bullet. You wanted to know my identity. We have played this game before, you and I. I. I never did get the chance to tell you how much I enjoyed it. Now we can play again. It says here, the last time we played together in the Rage in the Cage, you were almost out of action for good. But there were so many others around, we didn't get the chance to meet privately. At Thanksgiving Thunder, you will see the four faces of fear. All of them will be mine. They're all my favorite games. I know I, w- I will enjoy them. Look who signed this thing, oh, boy. No. The master. Right. We all know the master. Look, it says, P.S., my follower, Renfield, I guess that's this goof here, yeah. has a gift for you, and he will give it to you now. What, what kind of gift are we talking about? Oh, Jesus shit, Christ. he threw fire at him. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, man. Come down over here. He's been 
All right, fans. All right, so let's comment on that first. Harper, what would you have from the Master uh, or Renfield right there? Well, let me uh, – hey, was, y'all know, who, y'all know uh, who Renfield is, right? Mark yeah, that Curtis. was – This is the referee. Hildebrand. Yeah, it's it's uh, Brian Hildebrand, Mark Curtis, the ref. But go go ahead, Harper. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was like, oh, because that's – it's fucking this guy again. <laughs> he fell out of a tree once. Yeah. yeah. He, he was the one going, eh, 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 master, eh, master. Yeah, that was him. Um, all right, Hopper, anything else from that? Then when he fucking burned him, I was like, damn, it's been a while since I've seen that. Fire and uh, fire paper, was always, yeah. was always uh, funny. Doc, what did you have? Well, Renfield is a character in Dracula who's a vampire, so that's a, probably where I think that comes from. Also, uh, are we family friendly when the play by play guy yells out Jesus Christ? Yeah, Jesus Christ! <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> uh, that, I guarantee uh, you that gets bleeped out when it goes on the network. Oh, absolutely. They're going to doctor wrestling down to being lukewarm bullshit. Um, and then I've missed Kevin Sullivan. I'm glad he's back. And at First, I didn't know who this I couldn't remember who this was until Renfield hopped into the screen. I was like, oh, okay, I got it. So when the when the when this segment started, I legit couldn't remember who it was, and now I'm excited that Sullivan is back. Mm-hmm. All right. Well we'll with with Sullivan being back. You know I'm why? But you know why? It ain't that fucking hot, guys. <laughs> you throw a fi- you throw a fireball and that's all you need to get this thing up and running. Tend to agree. Hopper, were you about to say something or you want to move to the next one? Yeah, I was glad to see him back. Dude. I can't all his shit. Me, me too. Me too. All right. Well, here we go. Like I told y'all, I think I had mentioned it when, when he was around for the boss man match. I was like, uh, I think he's going to be back. We're just going to have to wait some time. So that's yeah, I do think I do think we're coming to uh, quickly coming to his end here, right? I think we are too, because uh, he's he's actually been done some stuff in ECW while he was gone. So he, right. Like he's kind of been back and forth a little, but I think we're coming to the end of him. So enjoy it while you can. That said, here's the master after you know he just after Renfield just burned the bullet. And after that terrible attack, we received comments on tape from the master himself, Kevin Sullivan. Here they are. Thanksgiving Day Thunder, a wonderful family tradition. You know, Bullet Bob Armstrong, because that's who you are. They've told me, the producers of Smoky Mountain Wrestling, that I can't say that Bullet Bob Armstrong, and you're going to meet me and the four faces of fair matches. Do you see Bullet Bob Armstrong? They say that I can't say that I'm going to reach in and pull out your entrails and Spread them to the four corners of the earth and your four mistakes that you made, mainly Brad, Scott, Stevie, and Brian can go pick up those entrails and bring them home and try to put them back together again. You see, it's the face of fear. You know, they say that I'm not politically correct. They say, Bullet Bob Armstrong, that I can't say that if I rip off that mask, I'm going to reach in and pluck out your eye. They say that I can't say that I'm going to bite your tongue off, Bullet Bob Armstrong, because they say that I'm not politically correct. Ha! I've always been politically incorrect, Bob Armstrong. And the four faces of fear match Thanksgiving Day Thunder. I'm going to be real hungry. <laughs> I'm going to eat everything up. <laughs> okay, Doc. The Master's back. Sullivan's out there acting crazy. You know the drill by now. What, what do you got? Well, I think he just told us that the Earth is flat. Because if he's going to go pick up entrails from the corners of the Earth, wouldn't the Earth have to be flat for him to go to corners? I don't think that's what he meant, but what Oh, okay. Well, I like yeah. the fact that he was like, I can't say this, and then he would say it, and it was yeah. pretty stiff about grabbing out entrails, <laughs> his mistakes of children, which is a frequent topic on for the heels to use. I like the fact that he ain't even playing. That's, that's Bob Armstrong. I ain't stupid. I know it. 
So um, it wasn't as lunatic. It wasn't as much of a lunatic promo as some of his earlier ones. It was just, I'm a bad dude, and I ain't politically correct in 1993 when you can be politically incorrect. So I'm going to fuck you up and get mine on Thanksgiving. I would agree. Uh, Hopper, anything to add? It sounds pretty fucking uh, brutal. Well, and it's it's the master, and it's the bullet. and It sounds, it sounds like something from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> uh, yeah, without the without the costumes, I guess. Yeah, but it should be good, man. I mean, it, look, you got the master who we've seen what he's done when he comes in, and we got you know the bullet who we know who that is, and it's just going to be a part of the tour, and we'll see where it goes. Uh, they're building it right. I mean, we're a month ahead, almost a month ahead at this point. It's November sixth, so in um, this, I I, I want to say for, if I remember correctly, this has implications. As far as the whole commissioner role, because that thing's still up in the air. They they haven't really talked about it, but uh, Bullet Bob and you know where he's at and what's going to happen with him. So th- there's there's some stuff that's going to fall out from this. I think down the road, if I'm remembering it right, but we'll see. So, but Kevin Sullivan, to the point Doc made, he's he's nuts, he's crazy, and it is what it is. But you got to love it. We'll keep going. Uh, they do a Thanksgiving Thunder Tour promotion. It's a pretty loaded card. We'll talk more about it over the next few weeks, but it is loaded. I don't want to go through it now because uh, we'll we'll get there. Uh, there are tons of matches already signed, though, for the tour. Uh, then we get a recap of Dirty White Boy and Primetime Brian Lee when Ron Wright was injured when he got out of his re- wheelchair. I really don't have much from this. It is what it is. We had fun talking about it last week. Doc, do you have anything you want to add? Mm-mm. And me, the Hopper, you? No. Nah. Okay, so we rolled into the main event of the card, which is Bobby Blaze versus Primetime Brian Lee for the Smoky Mountain Wrestling Heavyweight title. Bobby was doing fine, I thought, but then three to four minutes in, Tammy hits Bobby with her loaded purse, and Primetime Brian Lee pins Bobby as he is, uh, you know, fucked up. Uh, They then insult Bobby when Primetime Brian Lee holds Bobby up, and Tammy is in there slapping him away. Uh, Dirty White Boy finally runs in to help Bobby and sends Brian Lee running. Harper, what did you have from this and everything I just said there, if you got any notes? Fucking, it's, this was a good way to fucking end it, man. I think so, too. I thought that was the right way to do it. You got got a lot going on. This was perfect for, for the way to fucking end it, man. Well, and you got um. Remember, you got the whole thing where uh, primetime or, or dirty white boy is not really a face. You know, he's not I really tell you, a heel. He's, he, to me, it, it's almost like he's Steve Austin. It's kind of what he was for that for that territory. Like, and yeah. I know people are gonna be like, "Oh, well, he's not Stone Cold." We're not saying he was drawing money like Stone Cold Steve Austin. The point Harper is making is Austin was like the like a cool heel who fucked yeah. up his boss and and was like the anti-authority and it's kind of I agree I've had that I think that same comparison about him he's not a face he's not a heel but the people in that area are are are, are really behind him based on mm-hmm. what they've built with him and Ron Wright and Ron Wright getting injured and primetime Brian Lee being a big part of that so I agree with you and he's definitely one of them yeah, he's one of he's he's one of the people, just like yeah. Austin was one of the people. Mm-hmm. Doc, what do you what do you have from this? I I was go back to the match. I think Bobby is a much more credible challenger. Like he ain't gonna win the strap at this point, but he's a much more credible challenger to hold his own in this match than he was just a couple of months ago, which is a credit to him and the promotion for building him up because we haven't built a lot of guys. The guys that come in, I mean, Del Rey and him, but I mean, most guys have come in with a name, right? Yeah. Yeah. Most of the people here have, have had success, kind of had success elsewhere. I mean, Del Rey, I want to say he wouldn't have like major success, but I, yeah, I agree. Most of the guys that are, I guess, quote unquote names have done things, a lot more things elsewhere, more, I don't say more credible, but definitely uh, have uh, more, more experience than Bobby had at this point. What else you got, Doc? No, I just, man, he got hit in the head with a purse, man. Yeah. All right, so we'll roll from there to they cut to a promo. Bob Cottle's got Bobby Blaze and I almost lost it. Dirty White Boy up here, so let's go. Bobby Blaze, the Dirty White Boy fans, I tell you, you two guys 
have had many a battle in the past, and there was no love lost there, but you're right to the rescue. If everybody's wondering why I came out and I helped Bobby Blaze, it's because I've been in the ring a lot of times with this kid, and I know exactly how much guts he's got. Unlike prime time Brian Lee, brother, you ain't got one gut in your body. Now the dirty white boy has moved back to Buckstort, Tennessee, and I'm going to be raising all kinds of hell in Smoky Mountain Wrestling. And Brian Lee, I'm not going to wrestle one other single wrestler in this organization except you, tough guy. Whether you like it or not. Because of what you've done to dear old poor sweet Mr. Ron Rod, Ron's going to have to have a knee operation. Maybe crying wolf too many times. Maybe that's what happens. But Brian Lee, it's plain and simple, big boy. Every time you step in that ring, you better keep your eyes wide open, big boy, because I'm going to stomp a mud hole in you and walk it. Well, here, here's Tracy Smothers now. This is somebody else, of course. This after that title of primetime Brian Lee. Tracy? White boy, I know how much guts this kid's got, and I also, more than anybody, know how dirty and how tough you are. But don't expect me to feel sorry for you or Ron Wright. I don't expect you to feel sorry for me in one little bit. That's right. It's a good thing because I don't. <laughs> You've done a lot of bad things to me in the past, man, that you could write a book about. So I'm gonna leave you with this. I'm not gonna turn my back on you and you doggone sure better not turn your back on me. That's a warning right there, White I tell you. I... You know, I don't need no friends because I've got hate to keep me company. <laughs> All right, fans, that's going to wrap it up for this week. What a while when it's been. We'll be back next week. We'll have more action for you. And until then, so long for now. Well, Bob Cotto out there having a good time. <laughs> okay. Uh, Harper, what you got from this? Why did Tracy Smothers come out? Uh, I mean, they've got the whole, they've got that feud between the two of them. I mean, that's just because, like you said, just because White Boy is, I mean, he's not a heel, he's not a face. He's still got that beef with Tracy. They still, I mean, they never resolved anything between the two of them. Just because all, all of a sudden White Boy has kind of got a little bit more face in him than heel, and he's a, he's of the people. He's just kind of different of the people, I guess, because Tracy's, you know, of the people too. They still got that feud and, going on. And he don't need no friends because he's got help. He has hate to keep him company. Uh, I laughed at that. <laughs> that was funny. Bitch. Uh, anything else, Hopper? Nah. What you got, Doc? Well, I guess that seventy-five, eighty-five dollars starter shirt's gone now because he ain't a Yankees fan. Yeah. He got off. He got off right before that shit got big. They got good. Yeah, he's uh, that's done. He's well. He's he's back in Bucks North Tennessee. He's he's the dirty white boy. He just uh, he also kind of outed Ron Wright for crying wolf all these months. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of did, Look, didn't he? He wasn't sick then, but now he needs an operation. He's re- all right. He's really he's really sick now. <laughs> Look. <laughs> and oh, I know they're going somewhere with this, but the Smothers thing was completely awkward and unnecessary, in my opinion. Oh, you think they shouldn't have did it? I don't know if they shouldn't have did it, but it just didn't. Well, I don't. Okay. Don't expect me to. Oh, go yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, I'm not asking you to. Okay. Don't. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, what? <laughs> right. Where we go now? That's true, too. All right. Well, let's do our disability checks now. Uh, before I do so, I want to remind everyone if you're not a patron of the show, but you enjoy this show, go to tinyurl.com slash BTT patron and become a patron. Get access to the world class shows. Get access to the pre shows that we do and drop weekly these days. We've had a lot of fun with those with uh, T Rex discussions. Um, Doc cut a promo on Mother's Day and so did I. Hopper actually did it on the on the free show, but where there was actually more to that discussion. Doc and I revisited the Fuller promo when Fuller said he's not going to do the Von Eric thing. 
Uh, we actually did that in a pre-show, and honestly, it was like we were watching it for the first time again because we couldn't stop popping. So if you're not a patron, become one. Tinyurl.com slash BTT patron. It's a great way to support the show on an ongoing basis. Two bucks a month. You can do more. If you do as much as nine or even more than that, you can get a T-shirt after seven months. So there you have it. All right, Doc, um, you first this week. What are you, what are you doing disability check-wise? Disability checks. Um, we got to call it like we see it, man. This show was not as good as the shows we've had in the past few weeks. Right. Um, and I don't know if it's because we're in Jellico for too long and the rain truck broke down or what. Um, again, this isn't bad, but it's not where I want it to be and what it can be. So I'm going to say 7.7. Holy shit, I actually pre-filled it in for you. I said you were going to give it a 7.5, and you gave it a 7.7. Seven, seven. Um, I'm actually, uh, I thought you'd go 7.5. Uh, I actually went 7.5. Uh, Tammy's like tips you, probably Tammy's tips and Dirty White Boy and something else probably pushed it on up, I think. But. Yeah. It's not, it wasn't bad, like you said, but like we had that Tammy's tips when I'm telling you, man, I was listening to it while I was editing. Harper went off on that Tammy's tips when he said, when Marchie sat down and I was sharing my screen and Harper's giving play by play on it. He's like, <laughs> Marchie goes, ah, bitch, fuck you. I'm tired. I'm sitting, <laughs> sitting down. And I just kept popping, dude, listening to that show as I was editing. So I'm going seven, five, two. This wasn't bad. It just, there was nothing like, you know, Van Horn was good. Tammy's tips was good, but it just, it wasn't like you're, you know, it wasn't spectacular. Uh, Harper, what are you giving it? Yeah, I'll give it about the same, about a 7.5. It's just, eh, yeah. it could have been better, but, you know, what are you going to do? I agree. All right, well, let's go to the uh, Government Cheese Award named by longtime listener Shard Johnson. And um, so what are we doing for Government Cheese? Man, I, I got to be honest, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I know, huh? That's when I knew that. Okay, so here's the thing. The episode wasn't bad, and I wasn't like, when is this going to be over? But when I got to the end and I had to do the rating, I was like, okay, well, I'm not real sure. So who am I going to give the cheese to? Ooh, I'm really not sure. That must be yeah. it. Oh, there wasn't a lot. They, mm -hmm. Both fig Figuring out both of these, which I have written down on a piece of paper already here, so I'm not backtracking like you think, um, is when I realized the score needed to be lower, and the government cheese was hard to come by. I'll go first because I'm not afraid. In, ahead, a show, uh, in a show with, a, again, Tammy, Margie, and Dan Horn, and Dirty White Butt all out there, dude, somebody threw a fireball, so give me, me the Renfield for the cheese. All right. Well, yeah. Who are you going with, uh, Harper? I, I don't know. Yeah, because I'll say well, 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 Dirty White Boy stuck out, but but I'm thinking about like next week. Mm. It's uh, God. Uh, I guess dirty white boy. Fuck it. All right. He um, probably gets fucking government cheese to begin with. <laughs> he probably gets it to begin. With. Uh, I'm gonna give it to Tammy's tips. It's the last one. Not that it was all that great, but in a in a average or a slightly above average episode, I just I got to give it to Tammy. She she popped me at the end when she she said that she needed an economy size bucket of foundation. Cause let me tell you something, bro. These broads they all about that stupid ass foundation. Like they paint their faces up, dude. Motherfucker. Yeah, it's like Sherman Williams. <laughs> Isn't it Hopper? Yeah. I I mean I'm like. Sometimes I wonder why they, they just don't go to Home Depot and get a bucket of bear, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, prime coat and just put, put that shit on every morning. On that shit in case <laughs> it rains. <laughs> right. Dude, it's terrible. Like, I, if you ever pay attention to, like, the WWE women, dude, if, if you were to see those women out in public, you, you might porn, not recognize look at them. Star. Look at oh, porn my. stars. God, poor There's stars. actually good websites of that where they have them all ready for the, the camera versus uh, oh, God real life. Yeah, these women these women aren't what they, what you think they are, guys. They're out there trying to fool you. <laughs> every, I mean, it's it's such a it's such a departure. Don't be surprised when the pants come off if a dick doesn't dribble out. <laughs> Remember that show? Uh... <laughs> That's why you listen all the way to the end, right there. <laughs> <laughs> <Kitty>. <laughs> Go ahead, Hoffer. 
that show V in yes. the 80s? Yes. That's what it's like. They're fucking lizard people. And they rip <laughs> their face off. They're like, ah, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Broad, broads use that makeup so every day can be Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> you know how dude, they like holidays. Dude, It. it's like, I, I just, I don't get it. Like, Well, I mean, I understand, like, putting some on, but what? Jesus Lord, bro. They put way too much on, dude. Yeah. I, like, I, I, go ahead, Hop. They're like doink. They're like a fucking clown. Dude, they're like a clown. It's like, I, I call it cake batter sometimes because that's how thick that shit looks. Like, you've ever seen cake batter when people baking a cake? It's They just paint that shit. It's the worst. But Man, I look this good and I just run my face under the shower water and get the fuck out. Like, for that's real, it. dude. That's all and I, I look, do. And I'm pretty. Yeah. <laughs> you just so, agreed. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're pretty. Whatever, motherfucker. Hey, Doc, I re- you know something? We are only, you know, speaking of the broads, we're we're actually only 15 five star reviews away. We're, we're, I don't we're think creeping. We'll get, I don't think we're, we'll get there, and I don't really care anymore. I'm tired of it. I don't want to okay. talk to those bitches. Well, I don't want to well, talk to those bitches. <laughs> get the five star review. I told you. Apple I told podcast. you. Weeks, I told you weeks ago. When if we bring them on, what people are going to realize is is that in these relationships, we're the superstars. <laughs> And all that's going to do is cause heat for us back at home. Nah, you don't know how to work it, dude. You got to know how to work those bras, bro. You can't let them see. You, that's the problem. You, you, you're, you're looking at it where you're letting them get the upper hand. You can't. Nah, you gotta, you gotta reverse it. Reverse that shit. You know, you gotta work it to where they, they, they think they know, but they don't know. You're smarter than that. Come on, dude. You got a PhD. What do you? What, what's wrong? God what? damn, man. Do I have to teach you everything? Uh, real quick, uh, remember, don't forget to use our Amazon referral link, tinyurl.com slash Amazon. Go get Bobby Blaze's book, Pin Me, Pay Me. Go get anything on Amazon. I mean, they sell everything and everything. So there it is. Get it. Bookmark it. Give it to your wives and girlfriends, whoever in your family shops on Amazon. tinyurl.com, BTT Amazon. We really would appreciate it. Uh, follow us on Twitter. The link's in the show notes. Follow us on Facebook. The link's in the show notes. Go buy Harper's shirt. Yeah. Ladies, the line is to the right on the Pro Wrestling T store. Fuck. It's on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash booking the territory. Click shop now. You can get the Pro Wrestling T store. And uh, if you don't know where it's at, just uh, DM me or IM or IM me or message me on the Facebook page and I'll send you the link if you can't find it. There you have it. Shout out to the wrestling podcast about nothing with ROH's Brian Malonis, Mike Crockett. They do their podcast every single Monday. Uh, just search wrestling podcast about nothing and you will find their show and subscribe to it uh good stuff that they're doing a lot of they do a lot of classic stuff not not a ton but but enough and uh, i think you'll enjoy it uh, the conversation is real good too all right let's uh let's get out of here um doc you got anything else let's get out of here i'll do this shout outs for the hall of fame patrons on next week's episode so harper hit the tagline take us home okay bitch <laughs> <laughs>